I want to thank you for listening to the Hope Biblical uh, Counseling Center broadcast today. My name is Dr. Terry Coomer, the director of Hope Biblical Counseling Center, and I will be your teacher today. And our greatest desire is that you would be encouraged in the Lord today. So I want to speak to you uh, this, this, in this message about what about those who go back to their old ways? You know, our, our desire is to be an encouragement and a help to those who need help. And the number one thing that we do here, and I do here as a biblical counselor and speaker in dealing with marriage and other things, is to try to help people to move out of a feelings-dominated, controlled, emotion-controlled life into a controlled-by-the-Holy-Spirit, biblical-principle-driven life. Now, one of the most important decisions that you're ever going to make in your life is to become a Christian. And there has to be a period of time, a point in time in your life, when you realize that you're a sinner. Uh, and the Bible says, in, uh, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. So we're all sinners. And because we're sinners, we're condemned to die. So everybody that you know has died. Uh, no one gets by without that. And the Bible says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, so God's gift to you and me is eternal life, and that comes through Jesus Christ. And there has to be a point where I receive that gift. And at that moment, whenever I understand that I really need to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, I ask, I believe in my heart that Jesus died on, for me on the cross, that he was buried and that he rose again the third day so that I can have life and have it more abundantly. So I turn from myself and I turn from my sins. I repent. And I ask Jesus to forgive me of my sins and to come into my heart and be my Savior. And Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Didn't say might be. Didn't say possibly could be. Said shall be saved. But, you know, and, and that, that gives you a new life. And the moment you ask Jesus Christ into your heart, the Holy Spirit comes to indwell you. And you start to grow and learn. And, you know, many people never get off the ground in learning in their Christian life, never learn how to be a spirit-controlled person, never learn how to change things in their life. Uh, but then there are those that grow and learn, and then, uh, you know, they go back to old ways again. It doesn't mean that they're not saved. It means that they're just going back to some areas that in their life that, you know, uh, had changed, but now we're just going back there. Now, what about those that go back to their old ways? And in our biblical counseling program, most of the people who come for biblical counseling have professed to be saved, and they're, but they're in serious trouble in their lives, their home, and their marriage. They're in destruction mode in their life and generally have been for some time. Many times they're coming from a church that has not taught them how to have a real, intimate, personal, and passionate relationship with God. They've never learned or they've rejected how to be a spirit-controlled person. Now, most of the time, they've never learned what it means to be a spirit-controlled person. But sometimes, they've never truly been saved. And uh, they may have said something with their mouth, but they did not believe that in their heart. And it really you know, didn't affect them that much. Other times, the counselee is made a profession of faith, but out of fellowship with God, and they're living for their lusts. Now, we've had people who've gone through the biblical counseling program and went on and did fine in their life and grew and became uh, great workers for God, or they've been a great encouragement to others, and They've been able to share their testimony with others and have done very, very well. We're thankful and grateful to God for that. However, just like in the church, there are people that uh, they do well for a while and then uh, then went back again into their old life and back again into the things that they were doing before. 
So why does a person go back to their old ways? The number one reason for a person going back into their old ways is because, uh, is because they're being led by their emotions. They're led by their emotions and they get weary of not being able to do what they want to do. They're spiritually immature. <clears throat> In essence, they live for their lusts. And for example, if a per purpose, a person has been involved in a, a wicked sin in the past, uh, and many people we counsel have been involved in those things many times, you can see the slide coming. Uh, they they put, start to put things back into their lives that gradually puts them in that position to be involved again. They may still go to church, but their heart is turned back to the world. They feel they have been restrained by the things of God, okay? And, uh, you know, they're limited as what they can do and, and those kinds of things, which is not true. But if I would have a real relationship with God and see things properly, uh, rather than being led emotionally, I wouldn't be feeling that way. But they feel they've been restrained by the things of God. And of course, it's always somebody else's fault, you know, and, and it's sad many times to see the pattern they go through. They may have said they would never do the things they are now doing. You know, so, you know, they, they, they've said, I've turned from that. I'm not ever going to do it again. And now they're back doing it again. Well, what happened? So they're out of fellowship with God. And the Bible says they now love the world. They may still talk about the things of God, but as you watch the slide, you're amazed at what they've said in the past, and now they're headlong galloping toward the world and the things of the world. 1 John 2, 15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And for all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. They focus on worldly friends, which is a desire of the flesh. They realize their behavior, or, or they rationalize their behavior by saying they're going to witness to them. However, that's not really their motive. Their motive is to live emotionally and be uh, a codependent person. They want these people in their lives and they will rationalize anything they have to to make that happen. The love of the Father is no longer in their heart. Doesn't mean they're not saved, but the love that they had for the things of God is no longer there. They've replaced their love for God by rationalizing each decision they make. They love the world. They're prideful people who believe that they can live independently from God, and that is the definition of pride. And sadly, they take others with them and destroy themselves, their children, their home, their marriage, and in many instances, the church is harmed by their behavior. Churches also go to worldly ways. I heard a pastor say one time in preaching that any church is just one pastor away from being a new evangelical worldly church. When people in a church and leaders choose worldly things, they also changed their message. And we all know of churches that once stood for good things, biblical things, and now their message is, is more of fun and, and silliness and worldly things. And you see the slide in the services with you know, an ungodly appearance, music that's not honoring to God, and the emphasis on less Bible and more world. You know, the Bible is God's message to us. We're to preach the word. We're to be instant in season, out of season. You know, we're to preach the word, not about the word. And, you know, uh, we and, you know, and in, in these types of church situations, lives are fo more focused on the world than they are on what God's word says. They, the, they rationalize the changes with worldly activities and emphasis on things that are more important than having a real, intimate, personal, and passionate relationship with God. Uh, they rationalize the worldly things with, we need to show love and compassion. 
Love and, and compassion in the Bible never mean we compromise our lives with the things of the world. We need to show love and compassion biblically, not worldly. And when a person talks about love and compassion, but never sees their slide to the world, it's because the emphasis is no longer biblical. So don't be deceived by sowing to the wrong things and believing it's okay. In Galatians 6, 7, and 8, it says, Be not deceived. God's not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth of the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption or destruction. But he that soweth of the Spirit shall reap life everlasting or a Spirit-controlled life. Many people go back to their old ways because they're deceived. The devil is all about seeking to deceive us. I don't know if you, you know, you think about that. His whole thing is deception. The people who come to us for biblical counseling have been de deceived in their lives. People who go back to their old ways are deceived. 1 Peter 5, 6 through 9. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So who is the devil devouring? In 1 Peter 5, 69, he's talking to saved people here, not lost people. So the devil is devouring saved people who do not have a real, intimate, personal, and passionate relationship with God. They're not spirit-controlled people. They may know what that means, but that's not what they want in their lives. Generally, they don't know what it means to be a spirit-controlled person. So they don't know or have rejected it for their lusts. So we hear from them every week. And see, by this time, people are really in a serious issue. And we get called uh, for help. And that's, we, that's why we're here. But we have to understand that we can't live for our lusts. We can't go backwards. God wants us to grow. He wants us to go forward. So the question needs to be asked and answered. Is it possible that a person who professes to be saved and looks and talks like a Christian is not saved? And the answer is yes. Many of the people we counsel, though, find out in counseling that they've ne never truly been born again or, or saved. However, what we find most of the time is the person that's going back to their old ways it's because they're led by their emotions and they're seeking the things of the world. Their lusts are in full play, rationalized and justified. Their destruction will be sure and true. Folks, it never works to go backwards. You can make all kinds of excuses for it. I've been hurt. I've been gossiped about. I, I have been, and it goes on endlessly. Deal with it biblically. Focus correctly. Don't wallow in your hurt. Don't neglect your time with God and his word because you don't feel like it. It's a slide backwards. The more rationalization, the more justification, and move toward the world will determine the level of destruction in your life. And let me encourage you today, don't go backwards. Turn your hurts, your fears, your complaints, and even your worldly desires to God. You want to keep a short account with God. Each day, ask God if there's any sin or lust or bitterness that stands between you and him. Ask him to show it to you. Confess it. Repent from it. Turn from it. Get in God's word daily and ask God to give you his message for you today. Show you, teach you something. Ask him to teach you today. Be a learner and focus on submitting to God each day and especially at the point of impact. If you're saved, you still have an old nature. It is deceptive and does not get weaker. You have to take control of your old nature, you know, your dark side, rather than allowing it to control you by submitting yourself to God each day and multiple times a day at the point of spiritual impact. And remember, a person who's out of fellowship with God will always go spiritually backwards. There's no other option in your life but to really be a spirit-controlled person. Ephesians 5, 17 through 18 says, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. 
And be not drunk with wine, where is excess, but be filled or controlled with the Spirit. Now, so what is the will of God? Well, the will of God is to be a Spirit-controlled person, folks. A Spirit-filled and controlled person. And if not, you're spiritually unwise, the Bible says. And if I'm not a Spirit-controlled person, I will be on the path of spiritual destruction, and we cannot be deceived about this. Now, you know, have you found yourself in what I'm talking about today? I want you to be careful here. God wants you to be all you can be for him today and have a powerful testimony of living a spirit-controlled, yielded, godly life that is serving and living with humility, joy, and peace. We encourage you today to make Jesus Christ real in your life by humbly yielding to him at the point of impact and living for him not the life of a selfish, carnal, thinking, and speaking person. It's an important choice. Everything in life is a choice. Either you're going to make spiritual choices or you're going to make worldly choices. Tell God you want to yield yourself to him today and be a trusting, useful, and rewarded servant. Be the person who wants to change in your life, wants to grow. Be the person who can help others change and grow. Don't be the person who always needs to be helped, but the person who can help. Now, you know, when I think about this, I think about the fact of all the destruction that people allow in their lives. And God gives us tools to use. Now, if we never use the tools, we're never going to be able to grow. If we don't use the tools, we're never going to be able to change. And we'll find ourselves going backwards instead of forwards. So may we all, and you know, let's seek real biblical change in our life. May we all have the desire to make real biblical long-term change to the honor and glory of God. Now, I want to encourage you to realize the importance of walking with God and serving him and making Jesus Christ real in your life every single day and especially at the point of impact. When something happens, rather than to think bad thoughts, you know, turn them over to God. Lord, I want to turn this over to you. What do you want me to praise you for? What do you want me to thank you for? Don't be the person who goes back to the old ways. Be the person who goes and has victory over the old ways and grows, and grows forward and changes and grows and be all that you can be for God that you can be a testimony and a help to others in their lives. And I hope that this, uh, this study has encouraged you today and, uh, and, and it'll, it'll be a blessing to your life. May God bless you today. Be all you can be for him today and walk with him. And that would be our prayer for you. Thank you for listening. And until we see you next time, God bless you.